North Korea is one of the world's last totalitarian pariah nations. No country has been able to capture the world's imagination quite like the Hermit Kingdom. With over 70 years of history, there's a lot to cover with North Korea. Luckily, this iceberg chart made by Reddit user... I can't pronounce that, which I'll be linking in the description if you're interested, has a lot of interesting trivia that I'll be breaking down. I'll be adding some entries of my own, of facts and aspects of North Korea that I find interesting. If you don't know what an iceberg chart is, it's basically a compilation of trivia with the most well-known facts at the top and the most obscure at the bottom. A couple of other people have made videos on this topic, but I really wanted to add my own personal insights. If you're still interested, I'll link some of the videos in the description. With that out of the way, let's get started. The Kim Dynasty The Kim Dynasty is the ruling family of North Korea, which is officially called the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or DPRK for short. The country is currently led by Kim Jong-un, who is the third leader of North Korea, succeeding his father, Kim Jong-il, who succeeded his father, Kim Il-sung. Most propaganda in North Korea exists to glorify the Kim family, which is also referred to as the Mount Pektu bloodline, named after the highest mountain in Korea. The Korean War The Korean War started on June 25, 1950, when North Korea invaded South Korea in an attempt to reunify the country which had been divided at the 38th parallel after World War II by the United States and the Soviet Union. The war went very well for North Korea at first, but they were eventually halted by both U.S.-led United Nations forces and the South Korean army. Now the South Koreans, supported by the U.S., attempted to reunify the nation, marching across North Korea, but were stopped when hundreds of thousands of Chinese Communist forces entered the war to support North Korea and defend their border. The war ended in stalemate with neither side able to defeat the other. An armistice was signed at Panmunjom on July 27, 1953, but was never followed up with a peace treaty. Over three million people were killed during the war, mostly civilians, and its legacy continues to perpetuate the division of Korea today. Dislike for South Korea It comes as no surprise that South Korea is despised by the North. The division of the Korean Peninsula in 1945 was meant to be temporary, but both the U.S. and Soviet Union sponsored their own satellite regimes. The regime led by the American-backed anti-communist Sigmund Rhee was just as brutal as the Soviet-backed regime under the communist leader Kim Il-sung and had in fact massacred more Koreans suspected of being secret communists than the North executed anti-communists. Even with South Korea emerging from decades of military dictatorship in 1987, North Korea propaganda continues to view the South as an American puppet state brutally oppressing its own people. North Korean propaganda maintains that South Korea should be united under North Korea's leadership. South Korea, being a highly industrialized republic, is viewed by the North Korean leadership as a threat to its hold on power for showcasing an alternative way of life. Hermit Kingdom The Hermit Kingdom is a nickname for North Korea which derives from the fact that it is the most closed country on Earth. The name Hermit Kingdom used to refer to Korea as a whole, as Korea has a long history of being a closed, difficult to access country. Only with the arrival of Europe and Japan in the late 1800s was Korea open to the world. Nuclear Weapons When the survival of the dictatorship came into question after the decline and fall of the Soviet Union, North Korea pursued nuclear weapons as both a form of deterrence and a bargaining chip. North Korea always had nuclear ambitions but was only able to make headway during the 90s, where despite periods of negotiation and retreat from its neighbors, its nuclear arsenal continued to grow. The first nuke was tested in 2006 with the more successful test in 2009. According to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, North Korea is estimated to have 45 to 55 nuclear weapons. Demilitarized Zone The Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ as it's called, is the 160 mile long border between North and South Korea. This is the point where the Korean War ended in 1953, and despite its name, it is the most heavily militarized border in the world, with hundreds of thousands of troops on either side, along with mines, tanks, and heavy artillery. Once referred to as the Cold War's last frontier, there have been a number of deadly incidents that have increased tension between the two Koreas. North Korea has even dug a number of infiltration tunnels, but most of these have been sealed. Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un Former U.S. President Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un have had a rocky history. Early in Trump's term, he promised a tougher line on North Korea, famously saying that he would rain down fire and fury if the North Korean government continued its nuclear ambitions. Later in his presidency, he took a softer line, meeting with Kim Jong-un in Singapore in 2018, where the two discussed denuclearization. This was followed up in 2019 in a meeting in Hanoi, Vietnam, which fell through, with both parties leaving the talks. 
Trump later met Kim at the DMZ later in the year with South Korean President Moon Jae-in. Despite their hostility, Kim and Trump grew to have something of a bromance. Another thing, the image of Kim Jong-un's bodyguards running with his limousine was pretty entertaining. Otto Warmbier Otto Warmbier was an American college student on a tour to North Korea who was detained in 2018 for allegedly stealing a propaganda poster. He was tried in a North Korean court for, quote, a hostile act against the state. He gave a rehearsed confession, claiming to have acted under orders from the Methodist Church and the CIA. On the early morning of January 1st, 2016, I committed my crime of taking out the important political slogan from the staff-only area of the Angokdo International Hotel, aimed at harming the work ethic and the motivation of the Korean people. He was sentenced to 15 years hard labor. In 2017, he was sent to the United States in a comatose state, dying later in the year. Warmbier was able to enter North Korea through a tour group, which leads us to... Tours of North Korea. There are a number of tourist agencies that give tours to North Korea. The one Otto Warmbier chose is called Young Pioneers, which is known for exotic and dangerous places like Chernobyl. The only way to fly into North Korea as a tourist is through China. Once there, you are forced to stay at an isolated hotel with no contact with the locals. When leaving the hotel, you are accompanied at all times with government minders who tell you what to do and restrict who you can talk to. Needless to say, it's not the ideal tourist experience and most people take these tours just to say that they went to North Korea. Dennis Rodman Dennis Rodman is a professional basketball player who played for the 1990 Chicago Bulls, widely considered the greatest team in basketball history. The second North Korean dictator, Kim Jong-il, was a notable fan of the Bulls and was presented with a basketball signed by Michael Jordan from U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright in October 2000. Kim Jong-il's love of the Bulls was passed on to his son, Kim Jong-un, who played basketball during his high school years in Switzerland. Dennis Rodman first visited North Korea in 2013, being one of the first Americans to meet with the North Korean leader. He has since visited North Korea on quite a few occasions, getting to know Kim Jong-un in a way very few have. Rodman has some genuine clout in North Korea, and he is even credited with getting American missionary Kenneth Pei released from captivity in 2014 when Rodman asked Kim to do him a solid. Rodman has come under criticism for his relationship with Kim, but I personally think that he has done far more good than harm with his visits to North Korea. 90s Famine With the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, North Korea lost much of its access to cheap fuel. Along with major blackouts of electricity, this also signaled the collapse of North Korea's heavily mechanized agricultural industry. In 1995, heavy rains were all it took for the system to crack. The true number will never be known, but somewhere between 500,000 and 3 million people are said to have died from famine and disease during this period. Even at the lowest estimate, this means 2.5% of North Korea's population died during the famine. The mass starvation largely abated around 1999 with a massive influx of humanitarian aid from the US, South Korea, China, and Japan as part of negotiations for an end to the North's nuclear program as well as the rise of markets and private trade in North Korean society, which, although officially denounced, is largely tolerated. Dissolution of the Soviet Union caused the famine. This entry refers to the effect the collapse of the Soviet Union had on the North. As previously mentioned, the end of Soviet trade and aid was a disaster for the North, but this was a disaster of the North's own making. By managing an economy with no room for private trade or commerce, the northern leadership made the effects of natural disasters like the floods in 1995 all the more disastrous. Despite the same weather in South Korea, there was never any starvation south of the DMZ. Sungun Sungun is a policy in North Korea devised under Kim Jong-il, meaning military first. It was created during 1997 in the midst of the North Korean famine and was meant to prioritize the military over every other institution in the country. When foreign aid arrived, the military and the Workers' Party elite were the first to receive their rations. North Korea has the fourth largest army in the world with over 1.2 million men and women under arms. Yunmi Park Yunmi Park is a North Korean defector and political activist who fled from North Korea to China in 2007 was kidnapped and abused by human traffickers in China before escaping to Mongolia. She ended up in South Korea and eventually settled in the U.S. After publishing a best-selling book, she has become something of a media personality for her conservative views, often comparing woke culture to life in North Korea. Kim Jong-un Death Rumors Back in 2020, various media outlets reported that Kim Jong-un was on his deathbed. 
The rumors also involved some type of surgery, although nothing was substantiated. He wasn't dead, the media got it completely wrong, not much to say about this one. Sony Pictures Hack In 2014, the film studio Sony Pictures was hacked by an organization known as the Lazarus Group, a hacking syndicate with ties to the North Korean government, which demanded that Sony withdraw the film The Interview. The Interview was a comedy depicting the fictional assassination of Kim Jong-un. The movie was given a limited theatrical release after the incident. 28 Approved Haircuts North Korea is well known for its control over the lives of its citizens, but it still comes as a shock to learn that North Korea has only 28 officially approved haircuts. This one speaks for itself. Participant Video Participant is a YouTube channel that made a video where a North Korean defector tells his story. I'll put a link in the description. Persecution of Christians North Korea suppresses any belief not officially sponsored by the regime, especially Christianity. This is especially ironic considering that Kim Il-sung, the founding dictator of North Korea, was raised in a Presbyterian Christian family. Christianity has had a large impact in Korea, and in the early 20th century, Pyongyang, which would become the capital of North Korea, was known as the Jerusalem of the East. South Korea is one of Asia's most Christianized nations, and there are many missionary organizations that support North Korean defectors. Missionaries are banned from North Korea, and Christianity, along with religion in general, is outlawed. There exist a few churches, but these exist for propaganda reasons. Kim Il-sung's Calcinosis The founding dictator of North Korea, Kim Il-sung, had a large calcium deposit on the back of his neck from a condition known as calcinosis. As a result, he wasn't allowed to be filmed or photographed from the back, but some pictures exist taken where Kim traveled outside North Korea on diplomatic visits. In South Korea during the 60s and 70s, Kim was mocked by being portrayed as having a cancerous growth. At carnival ring tosses, players were given extra points for landing a ring on Kim's growth. North Korea's TikTok A TikTok account named North Korean Life shows life inside the capital, Pyongyang. It's widely speculated that this is a propaganda account. Condoms are illegal Despite the title of the entry, I can't find any information confirming that condoms are illegal in North Korea, just that they're hard to find. The North Korean regime looks down on contraceptives as a high birth rate is encouraged. Similar views existed in the Soviet Union under Stalin and other Eastern Bloc countries. Shane Smith Shane Smith is a reporter for Vice News who entered North Korea on a handful of occasions, always accompanied by government minders. Journalists in North Korea are subject to the same restrictions as tourists, seeing only what the minders want them to see. Holidays North Korea has several holidays. There's New Year's Day, Workers' Party Foundation Day, and the Army Foundation Day. The two most important are the Day of the Sun on April 15th, which celebrates founding dictator Kim Il-sung's birthday and the Day of the Shining Star on February 16th, which celebrates Kim Jong-il's birthday. North Korean propaganda claims that Kim Jong-il was born in Mount Pektu on a secret guerrilla base, but Kim Jong-il was actually born on a Soviet military base in Karborovsk, where his father Kim Il-sung, the future first leader of North Korea, led a Red Army reconnaissance brigade. Propagandists changed Kim Jong-il's birthplace because it wasn't acceptable for a North Korean leader to be born on foreign soil. This originally existed as two entries on the iceberg, but I think it's better just to include holidays in general. Oh Chung Sung Oh Chung Sung is a North Korean defector who made his escape to South Korea while he was on guard duty at the Joint Security Area in the Demilitarized Zone. He drove a car to the border, then exited the vehicle while being shot at from other North Korean guards. He was shot five times and had to be immediately brought to a hospital. He survived and currently lives in South Korea. According to the Japanese newspaper Sanke Shimbun, Oh was the son of a major general. In North Korea, the relatives of defectors are punished in their place. His family was most likely arrested and sent to a labor camp for his defection. American POWs in North Korea 7,000 U.S. soldiers were taken prisoner during the Korean War, of whom 2,800 or 40% died in captivity. Most died during the period when North Korea administered the camps, and it was only when China took over the POW facilities in late 1950 that the death toll dropped. The Chinese tried indoctrinating the Americans in communist ideology, forcing them to attend long study sessions in Marxist ideology. They were successful enough that 23 U.S. prisoners and a handful of British prisoners refused repatriation after the war and opted to move to China instead. There have been occasional allegations that a number of POWs still remain in North Korea. In 1996, the New York Times alleged that the Department of Defense knew that more than 900 U.S. troops were alive and being held in North Korea. The Department of Defense stated that no clear evidence exists of these allegations. 
Kim Yo Jung. Kim Yo Jung is Kim Jong Un's sister. She was born sometime in the late 80s and has a number of high ranking posts in the North Korean government. As vice director of the publicity and information department, she has played a role in building up her brother's cult of personality. She has also participated in many of the high stakes talks with the Trump administration. She has major influence with her brother and North Korea in particular, being one of the few female leaders in a largely male dominated society. Internationally, she has become something of an internet celebrity, with more than a few memes being made about her. When the media erroneously reported Kim Jong Un as having died, there was speculation that she would be made the new supreme leader of North Korea, but this proved not to be the case, of course. Korea Central Zoo The Korea Central Zoo is located in the capital of Pyongyang. Opened in 1959, the zoo has a number of oddities. Among them includes a parrot that recites government propaganda, a chain-smoking chimpanzee, and a pair of Jindo dogs donated by South Korea as a goodwill gesture. The family of elephants at the zoo are descended from an elephant given as a gift to Kim Il-sung from Ho Chi Minh. Steam in North Korea So somebody has an account for the video game platform Steam in North Korea, uh, according to this chart. The joke is that it's Kim Jong-un's account, but it's most likely a member of the elite. r slash Pyongyang r slash Pyongyang is a subreddit depicting information curated by the North Korean Committee for Cultural Relations with Foreign Countries. It's basically North Korean propaganda. Squid Game Smuggler According to Radio Free Asia, a man who smuggled copies of the massively popular South Korean Netflix show Squid Game and distributed them to a local school was sentenced to death by firing squad. Smuggled content from South Korea is actually quite common in the North, where shows and movies are smuggled on USB drives. The penalties of getting caught are severe. A student who brought one of the drives was sentenced to life in a labor camp, while six others were sentenced to five years. Teachers and school staff were banished to work in the mines. Lim Ji Hyun In 2014, a woman named Lim Ji Hyun fled to South Korea, becoming a television personality who appeared on multiple talk shows and amassing a small following of fans. In 2017, she completely disappeared until she was spotted in a North Korean propaganda video where she stated that she was lured to South Korea and forced to slander the North. It is most likely that she was kidnapped and forced to make this video by the North Korean government. Kim Hae-suk Kim Hae-suk is a woman who was imprisoned in the early 70s when her grandfather defected to South Korea. Since North Korea follows a system of guilt by association, his family was arrested in his place. Kim was taken to Bukchang labor camp where she would spend 28 years performing hard labor and facing starvation while being forced to witness public executions. She was released only in 2001 during Kim Jong-il's birthday. She later escaped to China. China refuses to recognize North Koreans as refugees and when defectors are caught by the Chinese government, they are deported back to North Korea where they face slavery or death. Kim was able to avoid the Chinese police and ended up in South Korea. Kim Jong-nam Kim Jong-nam is Kim Jong-un's half-brother, being Kim Jong-il's son by his first wife. In 2001, using a fake passport, Kim Jong-nam attempted to enter Japan in an attempt to visit Tokyo Disneyland. He was arrested and deported back to North Korea. The incident was highly embarrassing to Kim Jong-il, who wanted to disassociate himself from his son. Kim Jong-nam relocated to Macau, a city in China known for its gambling, occasionally taking questions from journalists. In 2017, while at Kuala Lumpur Airport in Malaysia, Kim Jong-nam was assassinated when two women shoved a rag infected with VX, a powerful nerve agent, into his face. The women claimed that several men, later identified as North Korean agents, put them up to this, telling them it was for a TV prank show. The women were released and the charges dropped. It was most likely Kim Jong-un who ordered the hit, most likely because he felt threatened by another male family member who was so open to the press. Chung Sung Tech Chung Sung Tech was Kim Jong Il's brother in law, having married Kim's sister, Kim Hyung Hui. When Kim Jong Il died in 2011, he played a major role as an advisor to his nephew, Kim Jong Un. In 2013, he was stripped of his titles and executed by firing squad. The speculation is that Kim Jong Un felt he had too much influence and wanted to see him removed. Statues in Africa Starting in the 60s and 70s, North Korea attempted to spread its influence in the developing world, mainly to spread Kim Il-sung's Chuche ideology for propaganda purposes, and to gain support at the UN against South Korea. North Korea has built a number of statues for several African nations, including Benin, Ethiopia, and Mozambique. All of these countries were socialist or left-leaning nations that North Korea found it easier to support. Americans in North Korea This one is really interesting. 
There are a handful of Americans who voluntarily live in North Korea, entirely segregated from the population. Many are aid workers and doctors, but there are a few former American soldiers who voluntarily defected, mainly in the 1960s. They were men assigned to patrol the DMZ who simply decided to cross the border into North Korea. A typical example is James Dresnok. Dresnok surrendered to North Korean border guards and was interrogated, then sent to Pyongyang to meet with other defectors. The defectors participated in various propaganda efforts, including reading scripts on loudspeakers in an attempt to get other Americans to defect. They later began to star in North Korean movies where they played the archetypal evil Americans. A BBC film crew got unprecedented access to Dresnok, where it was revealed he had two children from a marriage arranged by the North Korean government. He died in 2016, with his children remaining in North Korea. It is unknown how many Americans remain in the North. Pyongyang Racer Pyongyang Racer is a game made in 2012 by Koryo Tours and is one of the only video games made by North Korea. The player drives a sedan through Pyongyang, collecting fuel and avoiding cars. The game received lackluster reviews. Shin Sung Ok Kim Jong Il's greatest passion in life was film. His movie library contained thousands of movies, most of them banned from the average North Korean. Interestingly, his favorite movie was reportedly Gone with the Wind, and his favorite actress was Elizabeth Taylor. Kim thought North Korean cinema was too boring, so in 1978 he ordered the kidnapping of South Korea's most renowned director Shin Sang Ok, along with his ex-wife, actress Choi Eun Hee. After Shin attempted to escape twice, he was jailed and tortured before agreeing to make movies for North Korea. The most famous movie made by this kidnapped director was a Godzilla ripoff called Pulgasari. In 1986, after gaining Kim Jong-il's trust, Shin and Choi managed to escape to the United States Embassy in Vienna while on a film scouting trip. Where are you, dear general? This is a song allegedly written by Kim Jong-il. Since 2008, it has played at Pyongyang Rail Station every morning. It's infamous for how creepy it is. Kenji Fujimoto Kenji Fujimoto is the pseudonym of Kim Jong-il's personal sushi chef from 1988 to 2001. He was considered the best source on North Korean intelligence when it came to the private lives of the leadership. He correctly predicted that Kim Jong-il would choose Kim Jong-un to succeed him and has written a few books about his experiences. Kim Jong-chul Kim Jong-chul is Kim Jong-un's older brother. He was regarded by his father as too girlish to lead North Korea. He is also known for his obsession with British musician Eric Clapton and has been spotted at many of his concerts. He is uninvolved in politics and reportedly plays guitar in a band. Ryukyung Hotel The Ryukyung Hotel is an unfinished building in Pyongyang. Construction started in 1987 and it was once the largest unoccupied building in the world. During the night, it's frequently lit up in LED light displays. Yuna Lee and Laura Ling in 2009, while filming a documentary, journalists Yuna Lee and Laura Ling crossed into North Korea from the Chinese side of the border. They were arrested and sentenced to 12 years of hard labor after a sham trial. They were freed only when former U.S. President Bill Clinton went to Pyongyang for an unannounced visit. Ki Jong Dong Ki Jong Dong is a fake town on the Korean DMZ that was built in the late 50s for propaganda purposes. North Korea claims that 200 families live there, but South Korean intelligence denies this. The town is also notable for having one of the world's tallest flagpoles. USS Pueblo On January 23, 1968, North Korea seized control of the U.S. Navy intelligence ship, the Pueblo, which was conducting electronic surveillance, with one sailor dying in the capture attempt. The sailors were marched from the Pueblo, past angry villagers, and put onto buses that took them to Pyongyang. The captives were beaten and tortured into signing false confessions that the Pueblo had intruded into North Korea's territorial waters, with the ship's captain Lloyd M. Buker being put through a mock firing squad. In several photos taken of the crew, the captured men are seen giving the middle finger which they told their captors was a Hawaiian good luck sign. They were beaten when the North Koreans discovered the truth. North Korea insisted that the U.S. had to sign a letter admitting that the Pueblo was engaged in spying a letter that the U.S. signed and immediately disowned when the crew were released in December 1968. The Pueblo is currently docked in the Taedong River in Pyongyang and serves as a propaganda attraction. 
Blue House Raid. During the 1960s, encouraged by the war in Vietnam, Kim Il-sung believed that the South Koreans were ready to rise up and welcome reunification under Northern terms, and that they were only waiting for a signal from the North. Therefore, North Korea engaged in a series of provocative acts meant to destabilize the South. One of these was the Blue House Raid, where 31 highly trained North Korean commandos attempted to assassinate the President of South Korea, Park Chung-hee, at the presidential residence, the Blue House. They managed to get close to the complex, but were stopped when a firefight broke out. 26 South Koreans and 4 Americans were killed. Out of 31 commandos, only 2 survived. One managed to make it back to North Korea, where he later became a general, and another named Kim shin Jo was captured. He would eventually become a pastor in South Korea, and when North Korean authorities found out, they had his parents executed. Yi Han Yong Yi Han Yong was Kim Jong Il's nephew, as Kim was for a time married to Song Hae Rim, Yi Han Yong's aunt, making Kim Jong Il his uncle. He defected to South Korea in 1982. In 1997, he was shot by two unknown assailants. It is alleged that this was a hit ordered by Kim Jong Il, but another theory is that Yi had serious gambling debts. Rangoon Bombing In 1983, three North Korean agents planted a bomb that was meant to kill South Korean President Chun Doo Hwan, who was on a state visit to Rangoon, the capital of Burma at the time. The bomb failed to kill Chun because it was detonated too early, but it ended up killing 21 people, including several high-ranking politicians. Of the three perpetrators, one unalived himself while the other two were arrested. Wu In Hee Wu In Hee was an actress who, despite being married, was a mistress of Kim Jong Il. She was involved in an incident where she was found with a dead radio technician she was having an affair with. The man died from carbon monoxide poisoning in her garage when her car was left on, and under questioning from the police, she admitted to having an affair with Kim Jong Il, who at the time was being groomed to succeed his father as leader of North Korea. In 1981, Kim Jong Il ordered her executed in front of 6,000 people, including her husband, who was forced to watch. Needless to say, the affairs of North Korean leaders are strictly kept state secrets. Lazarus Group This was a hacking syndicate responsible for the Sony Pictures hack in 2014. It has also engaged in numerous illicit activities such as cyber theft from various regional banks. Its alleged leader, Park Jin Hyuk, is on the FBI's most wanted list. Ri Myung Hoon Ri Myung Hoon is a North Korean basketball player who at 7 feet 8 inches was the tallest man in basketball at the time. Born in a country where lack of food often leads to stunted growth, Ri, who called himself Michael after his favorite player Michael Jordan, was scouted by numerous NBA teams when he was training in Canada, but was prevented from playing professionally due to the US Congress's Trading with the Enemy Act, which was originally enacted in 1917. The US State Department eventually agreed to let Ri play, but on the condition that none of his salary could go to the North Korean government. Kim Jong-il refused, and proposed instead that whichever team chose Ri could pay the North Korean government in wheat instead. The deal fell through, and Ri wasn't permitted to play in the NBA. He was spotted at Kim Jong-il's funeral in 2011, and later met Dennis Rodman in 2013. People Eating Grass During the North Korean famine in the late 90s, people in the worst-hit provinces resorted to eating grass and tree bark. There are even heavily substantiated reports of cannibalism. Empress Chung Empress Chung was a 2005 animated movie jointly produced by North and South Korea, being the first movie to be simultaneously released in both countries. It's based on a legendary Korean folktale about a daughter who sacrifices herself to save her blind father's eyesight. Having no international release, Empress Chung quickly fell into obscurity and is now considered lost media. Abduction of Japanese Citizens I'm surprised this isn't further up on the iceberg considering how well known this is, but North Korea has abducted many Japanese citizens who are used to train their spies in the Japanese language, tell them how to act naturally in the capitalist world, as well as allowing North Korean agents to allegedly take their place. The main period of abductions was from 1977 to 1983, with 17 people taken, although there may be hundreds more. North Korea has admitted to abducting only 13 citizens, the youngest being Megumi Yokoda, who was 13 years old. In 2002, Kim Jong-il met with Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi, in which Kim made a quasi-apology for the kidnappings and had some of the survivors released, although some organizations claim that many more Japanese citizens have yet to be released. Forced Water Ingestion This is a North Korean torture tactic where a victim is forced to ingest large amounts of water while a torturer jumps on his stomach. It's just as brutal as it sounds. Evan Hunzinger Evan Hunziger was an American arrested for spying in North Korea. 
In 1996, during a trip to northeast China, he swam across the Yalu River on a dare and was immediately arrested by North Korean authorities. He was charged with espionage but was eventually released due to the help of New Mexican Congressman Bill Richardson. Kim Han Sol Kim Han Sol is Kim Jong Un's nephew, being the son of Kim Jong Nam. Kim has given several interviews in Hong Kong where he said that he felt guilt over the role his family plays in North Korea. After his father was assassinated by North Korean agents in 2017, he was placed in protective custody with his current whereabouts being unknown. Cannibalism As previously mentioned, there are numerous cases of cannibalism in North Korea, especially during the famine in the late 90s. When starvation hits, it comes as no surprise that people do what they can to survive. Jang se Yul. Jang se Yul was a math professor in North Korea who was caught watching illegal South Korean soap operas smuggled into the country and was sentenced to hard labor. He later escaped to South Korea. Not really sure why this is so deep on the iceberg as it's a pretty basic story when it comes to North Korea. It's so funny. It's so funny is a North Korean comedy show. Yes, you heard that right. It's been airing on state television since the 70s and consists of people dressed in military uniforms performing slapstick comedy. Despite its name, it's not really that funny. Kim Yong-il Kim Yong-il was one of Kim Il-sung's sons, born in 1955 by Kim Il-sung's second wife, Kim song a making him Kim Jong-il's half-brother. There was a sibling rivalry between the two and Kim Yong-il was sent in 1995 to North Korea's German embassy but he was then recalled and spent the rest of his life under house arrest. Ryongchon Disaster This took place in 2004 when a train carrying flammable materials exploded near the Chinese border, killing at least 54 people. The Red Cross was allowed in, becoming the only outside agency to view the damage. Like many aspects of North Korea, the circumstances surrounding the disaster remain a mystery. Korean Airlines YS-11 Hijacking this was a plane hijacking in 1969 where North Korean agents took control of a domestic flight to Seoul, diverting the plane to the city of Wonsan and attempting to indoctrinate the hostages. After intense negotiations, most of the hostages were allowed to leave, although North Korea kept the crew, the aircraft, and some of the passengers. It's another example of North Korean abductions. Fortune Telling In 2019, North Korea publicly executed two female fortune tellers. Traditional fortune telling has a long history in Korea, so this was most likely an attempt to enforce the regime's monopoly on culture. Jin Gyung Suk Jin Gyung Suk was a North Korean defector who left the country for the South in 2002, but was later kidnapped on a trip to China by men posing as construction workers who shoved her into a sack and deported her to North Korea, where she was tortured and murdered. The incident understandably saw a great deal of media attention. Golden Star Bank this was a North Korean bank founded in 1982 in Vienna, but it was closed down in 2004 after an international investigation found it complicit in money laundering for the North Korean regime. Kim Suki Kim Suki is a North Korean hacker group active since 2012. It's just another example of how proficient North Korea has become at cyber warfare. Underage Prostitution North Korea is notorious for sex trafficking and many of the victims are underage. It's just as horrible as it sounds. Cuban Diplomat Beating In 1965, a black diplomat from Cuba, a fellow communist country, was showing his family around Pyongyang when an angry mob attacked him with the intention of lynching him. They were only stopped by the intervention of the police. Kim Il-sung gave an apology for this incident, which is an example of racism in North Korea. Kim Il-sung's Glass Coffin when Kim Il-sung died in 1994, his body was embalmed and placed under a specifically designed glass coffin. The same thing happened with Kim Jong-il when he died in 2011. This is a common occurrence in the communist world, with Lenin, Stalin, Mao, and Ho Chi Minh all being embalmed after their deaths and put on public display. David Lewis Snedden David Lewis Snedden was an American university student who disappeared from China's Yunnan province in 2004. Chinese authorities claim he fell from a cliff, but the abductee's family union of South Korea claims that David is the personal English tutor to Kim Jong-un. I'm not quite sure where they got this evidence, and many others are unsure as well. Forced Abortion 
North Korea performs forced abortions on women who give birth in prison camps, but they also force pregnant defectors caught in China to have abortions because the authorities believe that any potential half-Chinese baby would lead to racial contamination. These abortions are done without any modern equipment and in the most brutal ways possible. Human Experimentation North Koreans in prison camps are subjected to ruthless experiments on endurance and hunger, with the data collected going to ensure that the authorities can squeeze the most out of the prisoners. These claims are widespread and confirmed by defectors. I have a few more entries that I think should be on the iceberg, so without further ado, Juche. Juche is North Korea's official state ideology. It was created by founding dictator Kim Il-sung and roughly translates to self-reliance or self-mastery. Juche means that North Korea should rely on itself rather than any other outside power to achieve its goals, and it's essentially a nationalist ideology. It was created to help North Korea stand out in the communist world. Although founded as a communist state, it's debated whether North Korea can still be labeled under this classification, as Juche has largely replaced the works of Karl Marx, while portraits of Marx and Lenin that were prominently displayed in the 40s and 50s have largely been replaced. Kim Ju A. Kim Ju A is Kim Jong Un's daughter, believed to have been born in either 2012 or 2013. She has accompanied her father on several public occasions, including several missile launch tests. It is unknown whether Kim Jong Un is grooming her for succession, but this is probably unlikely. Chong Ryun. Chong Ryun is the Korean abbreviation of the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan, and is an organization founded in 1955 that represents the interests of ethnically Korean residents of Japan whose loyalty is towards North Korea. The Korean Peninsula was a Japanese colony from 1910 to 1945, and hundreds of thousands of Koreans emigrated to Japan for work. Many Koreans were forcefully deported as virtual slave laborers, especially during World War II when Japan needed labor for its war industry. When Japan was defeated and Korea partitioned between North and South, the loyalty of the Korean community in Japan was also divided. In 1955, those supporting North Korea founded the Chongryon. When Chongryon was founded, North Korea actually had a much higher GDP per capita than the much poorer South, meaning that North Korea actually looked like the better country to Koreans in Japan. The organization still exists and manages a number of Korean language schools in Japan that are run like North Korean schools. Many Chongryon members own gambling halls and pachinko parlors, and much of the money they make is sent to North Korea. Their remittances back to North Korea are a vital part of North Korea's revenue. The Korean community in Japan is heavily discriminated against as Japan refuses to give Japanese citizenship to Koreans because Japan only recognizes citizenship if the parents are ethnically Japanese. The Korean community continues to be attacked by far-right politicians in Japan. Squirrel and Hedgehog Squirrel and Hedgehog is a North Korean animated children's show first created in 1977. It depicts woodland creatures fighting evil wolves and weasels. The characters are stand-ins for various countries, with the squirrels and hedgehogs representing the North Koreans and the Americans and Japanese being depicted as wolves and weasels. Russia is depicted as a friendly but drunk bear. It was the most popular children's show in North Korea, but the show was discontinued for unknown reasons. Underground City so this entry is based on the book Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Leader, where the author Bradley Martin interviews former North Korean agent An Myung Jin, who trained as a spy. He stated that in a tunnel beneath his special spy academy, North Korea has built an underground replica of the South Korean capital of Seoul. The tunnel is 8 kilometers long and has replicas of Seoul's landmarks such as famous hotels and government buildings. The tunnel even has its own economy, as actors move around pretending to be South Koreans living their everyday lives. For training, the agents are given South Korean money and told to spend it in the tunnel. It's really like something out of a movie, and one of the more interesting things I found while doing research for this video. So that's the North Korean iceberg. Like I mentioned, a couple of other people have covered this iceberg, and I'll be leaving a link down in the description below. I'd like to give a special shout out to the YouTuber Skeltoon who made the first video covering this iceberg, and I really recommend checking out his video. I think this was one of the more interesting country icebergs, and I look forward to possibly covering more in the future. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like, it really helps the channel.